<laughs> yeah, and we're live. It's Friday afternoon, and we're going to have some fun. We're going to talk about music. We're going to talk about ministry. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. We have Benny DeShera. Benny and I go way back. Um, I way say back. way back. We go back to, you know, maybe five years when you were helping me with the magazine. Yeah. And his wonderful band, Empowered, played at our launch party. Yeah. And at that time, they were a great band. But boy, has God gotten a hold of Benny and the band. And now great things have, are coming out of that. So we're going to kind of talk about that. But I want to talk about, you know, you've, you've been a working man your whole life. You've had an ad agency. You've done a lot of commercials. You're very creative. You've got a lot of good things going on. But you've had a dream in your heart for a long time, and that is to do music. Right. And you've been doing music forever and and you have a wonderful voice and your band sounds great thank you but let's talk about what's happening because things are exploding for you and i'm so happy for you but you've been working on this this isn't just something you woke up and said hey i'm gonna do this let's talk about how long you've been feeding into this dream yeah let's because it and i'm, I'm chuckling because we do go so far back right and i'm chuckling at the word explode I had a, a friend of mine in media the other day. He says, oh, all this stuff in these interviews and you're just exploding everywhere. And I said, can I help you with that? And he was like, what? I'm like, 97. And he said, 97. What is, he says, what are you talking about? I said, that's when I founded my band. I've been so so I grew up playing drums, technically taught, can teach how to read, play the whole thing all through school, high school, drum captain, right? All that stuff. And uh, back in the day, when I had hair, I had a secular rock band in New Orleans, and we did the we did the club circuit, right? I mean, Razor White and and Lillian X and all the uh, Zebra, all these guys. We were in those same circles, right? Mm -hmm. So, and you know what? You know what? Beth? You did it to be famous back then. That's yeah. what we were trying to do, right? We, right? we did all original stuff. Here's our stuff, and we're gonna like know us, love us type thing. Yeah. Well, you know, come come along after that, um, after a crazy divorce and people go through stuff. But God got a hold of me and I knew what it meant to be saved, right? So I get saved and I'm having a discussion with God one day. I'm like, I've given you everything but my music. And I, I really don't want to do tambourine and hallelujah. I mean, I will, but I yeah. don't want to. But if you let me do what I do, and so we're having this discussion, he's like, man, have I been waiting for you? So so form the band, many member changes, many everything, right? Even since we did the uh, magazine launch for you. Mm -hmm. um, and so now with everything going on and all these interviews that are happening because of, because of coming out of my TBI and going into recording this, that, and other, and I look back at it and, I think this is a message for any of your viewers or any of your listeners who are on this struggle. Like, did God really call me to that thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I can speak to that really quick, this is, this yes. is kind of, this is kind of what he gave me. Right. So when he says, come on, I'm ready for you. He didn't say, come on, I'm ready for you. I'm going to make you famous instantly. You're going to do Christian music. It, it mm -hmm. wasn't like that. So it's clearly, though, as I've heard him say since 97, right, come on. I've never once heard him say, thou shalt stop doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. because that is not the plan that I have for you. Now, had I heard that, whole different thing, but I've never heard him say, stop. And if we're really dialed in and we're really listening to him, and what God is speaking to us, because my favorite verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, right? For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, not the plans we have for ourselves. Right. Plans to prosper you and Big not difference. harm you. That's right. Give you a hope in the future. Those type things, right? And it's the third song on the new EP. So, and that's where that came from. We'll talk about that a little bit, but not once did I hear him say, my plan for you is to stop. And I think a lot of times in our finite minds, right? We go, mm -hmm. you know what? I know I've been praying about it. This isn't happening. This dream of music's not happening. So I'm going to stop. Let me put it another way. 
I've been praying for God to heal my marriage. It's not happening. I'm going to stop. Or my child is acting out a certain way. It's not happening. I'm going to stop. But the key word in those are I am going to Mm -hmm. stop, right? So it's not God's decision. It's our decision. So I think if we dial in and we really have a personal relationship with him where he can speak to us that way, all of the things happening now with the band and interviews, all those things are great. They really are um, in a worldly sense, but in a heavenly sense, the angels are screaming and dancing, right? Because they're like, we're getting the message about Jesus out to people. And if it ever mm-hmm. stops being that, then I need to just quit. Yeah. 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 So were you ever tempted to quit? I mean, no. I know that you had never, not one time, even one in time. the midst of trying to work and raise kids and be no. a husband, all in the midst of all that, you still, and you've opened for some big people. You, yeah, you, you've, a lot of you, big people. You so, have. So I mean, Mercy Me and Switchfoot and and Seventh Time Down. And as a matter of fact, Mikey Howard, who's the founder of Seventh Time Down, he produces us now after we open for them for a show. He's absolutely phenomenal. I call him the magic beanie. He wears a beanie and I don't know where all these ideas come from under there, but they're incredible. They're churning. They're they're churning. And it just goes to show you that it's just, so I'm the front man for the band, right? And I founded it and do a lot of the writing most in, but I can't do this without my guys. So I've got Shane Madair Jr. playing lead guitar and he's been with me the longest with that. He's disgustingly talented we can say that um justin Bur- jordan burdett is our new guitar player newest member and he's equally as talented and those two guys get together and start talking diminished sevenths or whatever and i'm like y'all just go in a corner and talk about that so i don't have to it, jeff maddox is our youngest guy and he's our bass player uh mick captaville is our drummer and then there's me so there's nothing ever happens on your own. I, yeah, I talked right. about that in my, my men's Bible study this week. I was like, my yeah. biggest, the thing that grieves my heart most is when I hear somebody say, I did this. Right, right. We don't do anything without God providing that opportunity right. to do it, right? And then surrounding us with those that it takes mm-hmm. to do that. So even a guy who's got a multi million dollar company who says, I did this. You know, what about your hundreds of employees under you? Have they no part? So exactly. We have to kind of keep a balance about all that. But you persevered. I mean, you'd lose a band member, you'd find another one. And I think yep. that that's the thread of purpose. You can't not do what God's called you to do. And I want you I want you to talk about the traumatic brain injury because mm-hmm. I mean, you fell. Um you you went out and you were down for several weeks with a traumatic brain injury and you're still you still don't have your taste or your smell back. So you've still right. got some of that. But talk about what God was doing in you and Donna, your wife. I mean, that had to be a really difficult time, but also you drew close to him and he drew close to you. So what did you learn in the midst of recovery? Yeah, that was that was a strange time, right? And and out of all of it, you know, you have to live a life on purpose. What did right. you see what I did there? You see what I did there? So 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 October 15th, coming up here soon, right, is gonna be the six year anniversary of this wow. traumatic of this traumatic brain injury. Uh, let me say already six years. Yeah. So I was watching the news, I had a decision to make back then, I fell asleep on the sofa. My wife came out of the bedroom when my alarm went off on my phone. She extended her hand to me. That's the last thing I remember. And she told the neurosurgeons when she went to hand me the phone, I was horizontal. I did not catch myself. I didn't trip. I didn't slip. I was just horizontal. And um, when I hit my wood floors, we have hardwood floors. And when I hit the wood floors, I struck the back of my head. that's what gave me the traumatic brain injury. I did not lose consciousness. I did not even split 
my head open and bleed, right? So the only place that the, I had a, so I had a internal brain bleed and everything else going, the, the blood couldn't escape out because there wasn't an opening. So it just kind of bled into my face. And um, Ugh, that had to be scary. Well, you know, and I wasn't aware. We went to the bed after a few minutes. I said, we need, we need to go. Something's not right. So we went to the hospital. So I've had way too many CT scans and MRIs and I should be able to see through stuff, but the um, ICU observation for a couple of days and an observation for another day. And then they said, basically your brain needs to heal itself. So what's going to happen is it's just going to shut down. You'll just, you'll just rest. You don't do any work. You don't do any music. Your brain needs to shut down and heal itself. So the first month I slept about 20 hours a day. So, um, Donna would wake me up every three hours and she would give me an insure because I wasn't eating and she would give me some water in my medicine and then I'd go back to sleep. So I weighed 198 when I got hurt. I went down to 160 something, which is crazy. Um, and were you sleepy? I mean, did you have yeah. to make yourself? So you knew because your body I was, just, was working so hard to, to feel. Yeah. I was just tapped out. Yeah. I, I don't even, people would come over. My parents would come over. I don't remember that. My kids would come over. I don't remember that. My, my friends, I have a state police buddy, one of my best friends. It's like I flashed my badge. I, I, didn't, I don't remember any of it. So in very little pieces, it, that was for like that first month. And then the second month toward right before Thanksgiving, um, I started coming out of it a bit and around I don't know. It was in the afternoon, two thirty-three, something about time now, right? And so, Donna, at that point, there, I was using a walker to get a walker, Beth. Oh my gosh! To get around the house. Talk I mean, about I'm like, humbling. Talk I'm about like, humbling. Right? Yeah. I'm like a young guy. I'm like, what is the deal? And so, yeah. but that was the only way I could get to the restroom and everything. So, mm -hmm. so she had gone off on an errand because she knew she could leave me at that point. And as clearly as you hear my voice speaking to you right now, I get this verbal male voice in my living room. It says, Benny, I have huge and great plans for you coming out of this thing. Wow. And so, so I did what anybody would do, right? I like snot cried like a baby until I oh. went to sleep. I woke yeah. up again about 11 that evening that I recall. Happened a couple of days. And on that last day, he was like, I'm telling you, Benjamin, I have huge and great plans for you coming out of this. And at that point, I had enough together where I knew who was speaking. I knew who was speaking to me, right? And so we start having a discussion. I'm like, Lord, I know exactly what you're doing. Jeremiah 29, 11 is my favorite verse. You're affirming me through that. So I, I receive that. And we just have, we start having this talk. And he says, so the very next song you write for me is going to be titled, Jeremiah 29 11. I don't want it really in the lyrics, but what I need to come out of this song is how I stepped into your life and saved you. Hi, how I, the Lord God, stepped into your life and saved it. I can do for anybody if they just press in. And it, it's one of the cooler songs on the new EP. So we, we, we're excited about it and just trying, I to, bet. trying to move in what he's got for us. So God caused a big pause. So you're not working. No, you're not making money. I mean, Nothing. all of that went to the side. You were able to just, I mean, you had no choice because you had to heal. Yeah. But God provided for you as you went through that process until yeah. you were able to get back out there. And did, did he give you peace for that? Did, was Donna freaking out about all of that? Or was she just really focused in on getting you well? Yeah, so Donna's an accountant, right? By by degree and all that, and so she um, she was a rock star. She was my nurse through the whole thing. She just yeah. she said, "This needs to be done. I'm going to do it." And kind of that's how she moves, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So I, I was okay with that. I'm like, because I had no choice at first because I don't right. recall anything, right? But but that's another thing too. Just she's. She's a godsend for me. Mm -hmm. And we can, and when we really, when we can stop looking at ourselves, right? Yeah. And, 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 and be thankful and look at God for what he's provided for us. 
everything that we need, even in our time of distress, like you said, I don't remember anything right during that time, just nothing. But he provided her, he yeah. provided, he provided my friends and my family that would come by to check on me, all those types of things. So even with, you know, people say, was your faith tested back then? I, I had questions like why, mm -hmm. you know, but, but if he needed to get my attention, he got it. And so like, I've always been, and you know this, cause we've known each other for long. I mean, I've always been, uh, my faith is, yeah, I'll talk, always, I'll, yeah. I'll talk to a tree mm -hmm. about it, you know, about Jesus. I, I just will. Right. But since the accident, I'm sort of a dangerous person because you're not getting away from a discussion with me without us talking about what he's doing or what he can do in your life as yeah. well. Right. And with all the craziness that's going on in the world, pandemic and crazy leadership and, yeah. and just all this stuff, God's kind of saying, I always was, I am, I always will be. And if, yeah. if we could, if we could just dial into that, regardless of what we're doing, music, mm -hmm. um, your ministry, through, through TV, like what we're doing, radio, your job, management, just being a worker bee, just whatever it is. If we could just thank him for where we are and what he's providing, he takes care of all the rest. And you've lived that so you can say that because you've yeah, right. seen that to be true in your life. So many people with the topic of purpose struggle with you know, well, I'll do that when it gets convenient or when I retire or when everything lines up. So basically everything falls apart for you from a physical perspective. It looks like it falls apart. You have a traumatic brain injury. You can't work. You've had your own business for a long time, successful mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. And now and now coming out of all that being at least stalled for a while, God's saying, I'm going to do something great. So what do you say to someone who's thinking, God has a purpose for everybody but me. Yeah. Well, right now, God's going, let me show you a thing. Yeah. I'm going to do a thing. Mm -hmm. And I have the privilege to live through that and be used by him for his mm -hmm. purpose. Mm -hmm. So for those who are struggling with that, guess what? God is saying to you in your life, watch me. I'm going to do a thing mm -hmm. in your life. And then because you're privileged and you're chosen and you're the apple of my eye and you're a child of mine, watch what I can do with you. Don't don't get in the way of it. Right. Just mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guide you. Follow. I open the door, walk through it. If I close mm -hmm. it, the four things in your head should be any -E XT next and just yep. move on. And so mm -hmm. a lot of times we get. It's really hard because you've got to remove yourself from that natural ambition yep. to self satisfy. Mm -hmm. When you realize everything that we have or will have, everything that we are or ever will be, he's already determined. One of the things, Beth, that he's given, I think this will relate to you too. It ties into what we're talking about. He the, Lately, he's been telling me, surrender the outcome. Exactly. Okay. So, so what I mean by that and what he's given me to that is if we believe that God is the living, true, breathing Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, right? Mm -hmm. Which he is. Yes, he is. And if we believe that the Bible is not a history book that can be changed and modified or what, but if we believe it's the living, breathing word of God, which it is, right? Mm -hmm. If we read the last book of the book, the outcome's already determined. Right. Like the end's written, right? So mm -hmm. as we go through our daily life and our daily struggles, what are we hung up on if the outcome's determined? So if we could just surrender the outcome to him, it makes it easy for us to walk through the purpose that's on our life that he's chosen for us rather than us trying to choose it for ourselves. If that makes any sense to you, I hope it does. It does. And I was sitting here trying to think about something that you said the last time we talked when we did an interview before. And I was like, what was it that Benny said that was so profound, that was so profound? And I've got it. So what we talked about is that you've got the ground that the seed is planted on. You've got the, the you've got the rocky ground. You've got the, the soft ground. You've got the sandy ground. Right. And you said that 
one out of three people have the capacity to walk this out because of the foundation that we have. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think so. When we're so, talking about spreading the word. Yeah. Yeah. And so in other words, I, and we were talking about, you know, people hear it, but, and they're like, oh my gosh, that's so good. But then they don't do it. And the reason that people don't give in to this purpose and trust that God's got a plan for their life, that he's going to open doors, that he's going to close doors, that he's going to walk you out of a traumatic brain injury is because our foundation needs to be built up in the truth of, of who God is. Because basically what you're talking about is who God really, really, really is instead of who we just want him to be that day. Right. And if your foundation is not there, you'll self justify your way out of his purpose. Mm -hmm. If that may, right. And so, and, and it's, yeah. it brings back to parables. He, Jesus used to teach, right? Build your house on the what? On the rock. Well, the rock is him. If you yeah. build it on the shifting sand, which are feelings, I tell my family all the time, I'm like, hey, feelings kill. If you're emotionally compromised about something, don't text anybody. Yep. Don't write anything on Facebook. Please don't write anything on Facebook. I'm serious. Yeah, just, just exactly. look, don't do it. Yes. And so you write and so, but because feelings are false and it's one of the devil's greatest tools is fear yeah. and anxiety, false evidence appearing real. Pastor yeah. Mike Heyman, one of, yeah. I'll never forget. He taught that. So mm -hmm. if our foundation is set, it's very easy to surrender the outcome that even though I went through that injury, he was in it. My, yeah. I just lost, I just lost my dad. I, October 2nd is going to make a year. He was in that yeah. the way, even the way it all went down, it was like a nine day thing. Even the way it all went down, he was in that because it, it just, it opened the door. Right. Mm -hmm. So like after dad got diagnosed, it was like, seriously, nine days later. And so he and I had the big discussion a couple of times in the last week of his life. I'm like, dad, I need to know, you need to know where you're going. And he mm -hmm. says, yes, I know where I'm going. I, I need you to tell me. Yeah. Right. He's like, Jesus died. He rose again. That's how I'll go to heaven. I'm like, then it doesn't matter what the doctors tell you. Right. You're about to be immaculately, perfectly healed and and yeah. so and so watch this and and in a worldly sense did it suck going through that you know what yes it did you know yeah. did it hurt yes it did the biggest thing my dad taught me was integrity mm -hmm. so you've got all that right and there was sadness in it yeah and we were there as he passed so but there's joy in it and there's hope in it as well, right? Because I know I'm going to see him again. So a little bit after he was passed, you know, God's like, hey, here's something. You need to write write this song about for your dad. But it needs to speak to people who's ever lost somebody mm -hmm. because there can be joy and hope in it because we know where they're going. And that's a new single that's out right now. It's called I'll, I'll meet, meet you. you There. I'll meet you there. So it's um, even through the sadness, there can be joy. Well, and that that leads us right into music because, you know, you said in 1997, you started the band. Yeah. And that's how many years? Let me too, help me. Too, I, I can't. I don't do math. That's it's a my lot wife. Of years. That's my wife. Yeah. A couple of decades. Time. So you started this a long time ago and you've been working on this as the midst of all the other things. And you, I mean, you have a great voice and the, the sound of the band ah, is fantastic. Well, thank, thank but you. now. All of a sudden, you just said you had 250 download, 250 million thousand, 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 thousand just, downloads. Just, yeah, of the EP. See, it was prophetic. It's going it, to be in the well. It, it well, it could be prophetic and could you know? And I've done a 700 club interview. I mean, who yeah. do I know who's done that? And just you know what, Beth, and I'm talking to you about it. It's but God. Yeah, absolutely. When when things are so big yeah to it to the normal person yeah it's it's beyond us right and yeah. it's only things that god can put together so i'm so excited about that and, and for anybody who's watching just just know that if god is in it you will see it you may not see it in a week and you may right. not see it in a year 
-hmm. but you will see it provided you don't falter in your faith in him and that he knows what's best for you for whatever his timing is perfect. His timing is not our part, our timing. So as long as, as long as we remember that, regardless of what it is that we're trying to accomplish, we get to see the fruits of that labor because we didn't quit and we just stood on that foundation. So it's, it's exciting stuff going on right now. So, so we tell like me, it. yes. And you have a lot of new songs out, but my favorite one is listen to the children. I mean, yeah. every time I hear that song, I can't stop singing it. Listen to the children. It's yeah. something about that little thing. Yeah, but that tell little me thing. about that song. Well, that song, you know, I'm, I'm watching the world. Yep. Our kids are being so lied to. And I mean, so lied to. Just just by the world. I mean, I'm watching commercials. There's commercials on television right now that would have never even hit the thought process of those yeah. writing it when I was growing up. So and, and what they're being taught in schools and, and everything else, you know, as I was thinking about all that, I'm like, if we would just listen to our kids, we could hear what the world's telling them. Yes. Right. So listen to the children, hear what they're saying. Right. And so it, then as, as parents or even grandparents, whatever, it gives us the opportunity to have a dialogue, right? And have a discussion. And we can tell our children, this is what our family is founded in. The foundation, right? We believe in God. We believe Jesus died and rose again. These are absolute. He gave us 10 rules because he mm -hmm. knew 11 was too many because people weren't going to listen to the 10 and we only have 10 digits. So those right. things, right? And this is what we stand for. Not that stuff that you're hearing. And it allows us then to like sow truth into your life. And so it came out in a song and that was it. So It's such a good song. But what do you say to people in families? Because, you know, you can teach them when they're little and you can, you, you know, you can, you can reach them then, but boy, that teenage years, I mean, we've all, you know, you've raised kids, I've raised kids. How do you get through those years and trust God with the most precious thing you've been given with your kids? Cause the world is, is mean and wicked. Yeah. Consistency. Yeah. Because I care, I cared, I cared more about having an answer for what I do as a parent when I get to heaven, then I do about what my kids think their friends think about their dad, right? Yeah. Your yeah. dad's crazy. I don't have to answer to your kids. Well, so-and-so's dad lets me do this. Well, guess what? So-and-so doesn't live with me. And yeah. you know, there's a hard truth to it. You can do it in, with loving kindness, but children will always, and I've had this experience in my life where they'll fall away, but they always come back to the firm foundation that was set for them. So, so yeah. kids who grow up and they get sideways with things and then they continue to be sideways throughout their entire life. They just never had a firm foundation to, re to return to. Yeah. So for me in my own experience, that's how it's been. Well, so my other favorite song, three days, yeah. I yeah. Mean, another one. It's just a really, really good one. You want to sing along with that one. Tell me about that song. Yeah. Well, basically everybody without knowing what it's about can guess, right? Everything that we could ever, no matter what you've done in your life, maybe you fell away from your parents because maybe you fell away from a relationship or a, or a marriage or a boss or just, it does. But regardless of what it is, it does not matter. Jesus took care of it in just three days. There was a guy hanging on a cross next to him. Yeah. And when he was being mocked by the other guy he says, dude, do you not know who this is? Remember me when you get into your kingdom. And what did Jesus tell him? Today yeah. you'll be with me in paradise. So regardless of what he, you notice Jesus never hung on a cross and looked over and told the guy. So what did you do? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you serious? There wasn't you a discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, what did he say? Because be of his me. faith, yeah. you'll be with me in paradise. So, so there's that, right? So there's joy in that too. So the whole song, basically the chorus in just three days, 
our Lord and Savior rose again. In just three days, Satan was defeated. In just three days, all our sins were forgiven. His love for you and me, he took care of in just three days. And basically, that's the chorus. But that's basically and, the message and, of the gospel. And regardless of what the world says to us and what it looks like out there, Satan is defeated. Those three days are the most important three days of the world in our life. That's right. And regardless of what the devil wants you to think, because he wants you to think he's winning. All this craziness we see going on in the world right now, yeah. understand yeah, the devil's got reign, but who has the ultimate reign over him even? God knows everything that's going on right now. Everything's moving in all these directions for his purpose. The return of Jesus is fairly imminent, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and if we if we look toward that and we look for that, that's it. I tell people this all the time, Beth. So when we're on stage, right, because we're not praise and worship, we're performance and worship. You're pretty much, you're going to a rock show, but you're hearing about Jesus. So I was going to say, you're jamming. We're jamming. And so, hey, we are rocking for Jesus, right? That's so, right. But when we're on the stage, if his message does not flow over the footlights, yeah. so where those listening get it, mm -hmm. then we need to quit and be a wedding band or something. Yeah. Because we're we're missing, we're not at that point, we're not living our purpose. We're just up there to be famous. And I'm, I'm you know, I did that right before and it yeah. didn't work out real well. And um Everything that God is doing right now with the band and with our music. I mean, Mick, my drummer, his six-year-old, right? And last, that, like in September, gets leukemia. So they're in Memphis at St. Jude. As a matter of fact, they're there this week doing follow-up. He's, praise God, this boy is in remission. Thank you. I, I, I call him a little David because when he goes to school next year, he's just going to be swinging rocks and just telling people what Jesus did and their faces are going to melt off. And, but that's fantastic. Yes. And he's, 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 he's strong like that. But what I tell Mick in that is that I'm like, well done mom and dad, because he didn't get that at school. He didn't get that fun. We're talking about foundation. He, right. he gets that and so and, and Mick and I talk about it all the time. If not for God, he doesn't know how they would get through his six year old having leukemia. I don't know how I would get through having a traumatic brain injury three years ago. I don't know how Donna gets through having breast cancer surgery. Yeah, there's there's I don't know how we get through my dad passing a year ago. So mm -hmm. everybody. So my story is not your story. It's not anybody else's story. We each have our own story, right? And so God's in control of all of these stories. And if we just dial into him, man, well, and, and life is good. And let's, let's, before we tell everybody how to get your music, let's end on that. Because in Revelation 12, 11, it says, they overcame him, our enemy, by the blood of the lamb. Jesus has done his part. Right. And us, us by the word of our testimony. That's right. Our test, our testimony is not doing us any good if we're not sharing it. We don't have to share our whole testimony, our whole life story. Nobody wants to hear it. But right. when you're coming alongside somebody who's lost a dad, who's been had breast cancer, a traumatic brain injury, our story becomes God's powerful tool to overcome the enemy in somebody else's life, and it it will defeat the enemy, right? If you don't speak about what God's done for you, then you have no testimony. Exactly. Now that sounds judgmental. Factually, if you do not share what Jesus has done in your life, you have no testimony because your testimony is you speaking a truth about what he's done in your life to say, right? So exactly, it's right. It's just, and people say, you know, Beth, they like, is it that simple? Guess what? It's it is. that simple. It yeah. is. It's that yeah. simple. It is that simple. Well, we could talk all day, but we, we could. won't. I mean, <laughs> but we'll have to do this again. So we'll do it. We need people to to go listen to your music, and you've got empowered. 
it's not empowered rocks anymore, right? I know it's rockin 4 jesuscom Is that right? Right. R O C K I N the number four Jesus.com. So that's the website. Um, when when I get the link for this interview, it'll be on there. All the interviews are on there. The music's on there as well. On yeah. YouTube, on YouTube, we're empowered and official. On just go go listen to music wherever you listen to music. We're on there. iTunes, Apple, Alexa. Yeah. That's just, awesome. Just, it's all over the place. And God's doing a thing. God's doing a thing. God's doing a thing. We're not. We're just we're just happy participants. We're just so thankful to be used. And we pray That's that right. our life is worthy of the calling that he has called us to, because that is what he's called us to, is to to live a life worthy of what he's doing in our life. So That's right. You go have a great trip to Destin. Have yeah, a really good trip. Good Get some, bring some sand back to all of us uh, land uh, locked people and um, have a great trip. And I'm going to be singing some listen to the children. There you go. Thank you. And, and the new single is I'll meet you there. Daddy song. So any it's place so good. Go, it's, I haven't memorized that one yet. I'll I, I hope I hope that brings some some joy and some hope to people. Yeah, I'm sure That's it will. Well, thank you for joining us, Benny. It's always good to talk to you. Benny yeah, thanks Shara, for having me. Empowered the band. Everybody go follow and keep up with them because God's doing something and we He's all want to participate. We that's all right. want to support each other. So that's how we do it. That's right. So, all right. You have a great weekend. Have a lot of fun and we'll talk soon. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye. Bye bye.